Insurance, do whatever it takes. Good morning. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let's get things. Hi, together. Mark Barton. It's Sandy Hook Promise here. When the gunman. doesn't want to get help mentally, emotionally, or physically. Situated. I'm a little behind today, so I have to excuse me. I had so much to get done. I was almost tempted to not come on, but it wouldn't be fair. I can't keep telling people to come on every Friday and then not come on, so I'm on. And I think the one thing about anyone who does uh, something on a continual basis, like, uh, I'm good. I, I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm okay. I'm not even gonna say I'm good. I'm not bad. I'm okay. I'm just um, I'm tired. Um, I got some things I got to get done, and you know, when you work for yourself, it's not easy. But you can't complain. But sometimes you can get very frustrated. But you have to keep grinding and you have to keep pushing it, and you have the responsibilities of uh, um, being a husband, being a father, and then when you're a person who's counseling others in pain you know you got to be able to absorb their pain and then purge it so you're not caught in that so it actually works out so this actually becomes a cathartic for me um, so coming on live is a form of therapy for me Oh, 
Okay, there we go. Smoke a couple. And how are you, beloved? Thank you. The psychological of transference without question. And so, one of the things, yeah, but you have to be able to release it so it doesn't, hey, good morning, Tina, so it doesn't burn up the person receiving it. And so, I'm a conduit for people that have negativity. I just have learned over the years how to purge so it doesn't keep me trapped up with it. Let's see, let's see. Went well. Gave How them. Heart failure with unresolved symptoms? Sorry, guys, I got like 14 things gave them. So, and seemingly unrelated symptoms like carpal tunnel syndrome. Help. Shortness of breath. And a regular heartbeat. I've been sick be other than that. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I hope that you are feeling better or getting better. And anybody that's watching for the first time, I am Keith K.L. Belvin, crisis specialist, human service counselor, author, educator, father, husband. And every Friday, every Friday from uh, 1130 to about 1, 1.30, I am on <clears throat> to discuss personal development, uh, conflicts, uh, deal with crisis, as well as we help to try to restore relationships. And Tina, I am doing okay. I wouldn't say good, not bad, but I'm okay today. I'm here. And so, um, this is uh, a safe space. You're a newbie, welcome. Tell us where you're checking in from, Michelle. And again, anybody else that's new, we welcome you. We're glad that you're here. My lovely moderator, Tina, is in the chat. She will be monitoring what goes on. But if you're new, welcome. Ch tell us where you're checking in from, what part of the country. Shout out to Alabama. And what we do here is, again, to provide you with a safe space for the next hour and a half. And we can have a conversation. Today we're talking about 10 ways to deal with a partner who does not want to get mental, emotional, or physical help. Someone um, shouted me out in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, the DMs and asked would I have this conversation because they're dealing with somebody who doesn't want to acknowledge that something is wrong and they were concerned on what to do. And I said, you know what, I think that'll make a, a, a decent show. Um, actually a great show because I know that a lot of brothers and sisters do not want to get help even though you present to them that there is something wrong. So we're going to have that conversation today. And again, all to all the new folks, this show, the replay will be over on my YouTube channel. YouTube channel, the link is in the bio. And you can just go over and watch any of the past shows. All right, let me just let the past know I'm on live. Pastor. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> and so, and all I ask is that you sit back, relax. All you got to do is take notes. I will take care of everything. But while you're taking notes, please tap the screen because we have a 20K or more goal for the hearts uh, because by you tapping the screen it lets TikTok do its thing to hey Melly does this thing to send this out to other people so we attract people over but I have learned over that time that those that need to hear my voice will find their way here and we are good so the numbers I never um, trip out on and um, just happy to be here so enough about me you guys in the chat let me know how your week has been or if you're new like Michelle, let me know how you're doing. Um, but again, everybody else, let me know how your week has been since the last time we talked. I want to hear how you guys are doing. And again, we are talking about 10 ways to deal with a partner who does not want to get mental, emotional, or physical help. And it's important because we can love someone and we can want the most for them. But what happens when they don't want to get themselves checked out? Peaches, I am okay. Thank you so much for asking. Hello to you as well. So again, all you have to do is lay back, tap the screen. I will take care of everything else, and we are good to go. Hey, Pastor Joe. <laughs> I just got finished talking to you. Hey, Pastor George. <laughs> I was like, Pastor George, I'm just talking to you. Yes, sir. How you doing, Pastor George? And again, today we're talking about 10 ways to deal with a partner who does not want to get mental, emotional, or physical help. 
And hey, good morning, Marie. Good to have you here. Blessings to you as well. And again, guys, if you are new, let me know where you're checking in from because we always want to greet you the right way. Only requirements is that you're respectful because if you're disrespectful, Tina will get to you first. If I don't, then we got to block you. We don't go back and forth with trolls and we don't go back and forth with negativity. And with that said, this is a safe space. So you are entitled to your opinion. If you have questions, I will answer them. I try to remind you, keep the questions towards what we're talking about because I don't like to go off on tangents because I have ADD. And if you get me talking on something else, I'll start to drift off. Tina will remind me to bring my behind back to where I'm supposed to be. And again, the list is designed to help you. If not, a whole lot of you can do if you don't realize they need help. But we're going to get into that, Michelle, because there is a lot that you can do. And um, seeing, seeing patients today, but I'm listening. Okay, Lady P, got you. And make sure you take care, folks. We got you. And anybody that's working, don't get in trouble watching me. The replay... It will be over on YouTube that you can watch, no problem. Let me just give this disclaimer before I go any further. A lot of times I'm talking about subjects of crisis or subjects that can create emotion or trigger emotion. If anything that I say is triggering to you because of your situation, please disconnect. Do not stay and be triggered into something negative. I do not like to know that someone that something that I said created a problem and I wasn't there to help. So if something that I'm talking about touches something in you that creates a negative feeling, go ahead and disconnect. I'm okay with it. You don't even have to say anything. Just go ahead and go get yourself together. You can watch the replay later when you have yourself together. Or if you don't want to be bothered with it at all, I get it. As a crisis specialist, I'm dealing with a lot of negativity. I am built to receive that. I know everybody else isn't. So I really want to say that because I don't want to see anybody hurt by anything that I say. Okay, and I, I want to say that, and I'll make sure that I say that every week when we get started. I get healing now, you know. <laughs> I got you. Got you. And so, again, the opportunity here is to have a conversation, and every week we have a conversation. And the goal is, again, to offer you something that when this camera is off, you can take back to your circles or for yourself and really go back over it. And if you need private professional help, my link is in the bio, my discovery call. Hey, sugar. My discovery call link is in my bio as well. Also, on the 18th of February, I have a webinar where we're going to get deeper into um, toxic relationships. And why? Because my new book, 12 Steps to Recovering from a Toxic Relationship, has been out now for a couple of months. Doing pretty good. And you can get a copy. Just go to the link in my bio as well. Let me show that again if you want to take any screenshots, anything like that. Okay, I'll hold it there for you guys. Okay. Now, let me just say this. I need something on a situation that my God, sister, and I have had some others have talked about. Send it to me in my inbox, Peaches. I would love to offer what I can. Now, the book is available anywhere books are sold, but I would suggest this to you. Go to my website. Also, go to any author who has a, a valid website because, and I bet you didn't know this, Amazon, as well as the other book sites, take 55% off the top from the authors. So yes, that is the reason why Amazon is able to offer you stuff at a discounted price. They're taking the money off the top from the author, so the author gets less than what they would get if you got the book from them directly. I'm just letting you know. It's a necessary evil, as they say. We have to have our books in all the places. My books are all over the world, wherever they are. But I get less when you get it from their sites instead of me. It won't let me write... Could you do it after your live? Could I do what? Could write what? The question? Okay. Yeah, just reach out. My links are in my bio to reach out to me, Peaches. I'll gladly listen to any question and, and, and offer what I can. So, yeah. Also, if you want me to sign it. Hey, Rich. If you want. Good to have you here, Rich. Okay, I got you, Peaches. Also, guys, um, the reason why I tell you that is if you want an autograph copy, then you want to get it from me. You got to follow her. Okay. Got you, got you, got you. All right. Well, I can't do all that while I'm on, so I will definitely will. So just send me um, a follow, and um, I'll take care of that. It's not a problem. But um, also, my email is there, too. In my in my, um, in my my bio, just click on the, the email box. Send me an email directly. It'll come to you direct. That's actually the easiest way, because my email come right to my, my cell phone. 
But yeah, I am. Um, if you want to get an autograph copy, all you got to do is get it directly from me and I can sign it for you as well, which I enjoy. Every author loves signing their name, so they can't trip on that. All right, so enough about me. How have you guys been? Let's put it in the chat. What have you guys been up to? What do you have planned for the weekend? What is your plans? Today, I got a hard stop around 1, 1.15 because I do have another counseling session that I have to drive to at the church. Um, actually, I'm still waiting for a confirmation, but yeah, I should be. Yeah, so it works today. Gotcha. Yeah, so I just got the confirmation. So yeah, I'll be jumping off about 1.15, maybe 1.30 the latest today. So just confirming with the pastor. So yeah, I'm always working. But yeah, just the one session today. I don't work the weekends. Working hard all week, just preparing for some football tomorrow. Yes, yes, that is true. I'm looking forward to the football games as well. I got a tournament bowling tournament tomorrow morning so i should be back home to watch all the games good to hear going fishing this weekend i have not gone fishing in eons oh my god i was young when we went out fishing off the jersey shore and caught whiting flounder and i can't remember what else but yeah i haven't been fishing a year glad i found you recovering enabler great to have you here michelle listen i'm a recovering misogynistic whore yep i'm a recovering misogynistic whore a person that was out here just living his life foul, but that's why I wrote the book from Gigolo to Jesus. My transformation came because of my reconnection to my faith and having a lovely wife. Well, she wasn't my wife at the time. Lovely girlfriend who became my wife, who understood her power and that her power was to not get caught up in my mess. And in doing so, y'all seen this magazine before, right? Ebony Magazine? Okay. So in doing so, it allowed us to be able to put out or to be able to talk about why love doesn't hurt. So I come to the table with receipts. I come to the table being able to explain to you that I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just some kook that's online saying, hey, give me money. I don't even say give me money. I actually offer something for trade. You give me money, I'm gonna give you something back. I don't believe in just send me money. So there'll be no GoFundMes on my cash app saying, hey, can I have some of your money and I don't offer you anything but me smiling at you. No, we don't do that here. We do real commerce here. <laughs> I sell products or services. We don't say, can we just get donations? Uh, but I do ask for donations for my young men and young women's mentor program. I do that because I'm speaking on their behalf. I do work. I have an after school program that I own that I work with young men and women who are troubled. So they say, I don't have any issues with them, but I do try to raise money to get them gifts and other things because they are less fortunate. So I do ask for money sometimes. So I cannot be completely, I can't be completely disingenuous. That's, that would be crazy. You may be someone I could talk to when I want to learn how to write a book. Ah, yes, I do own a publishing company too. I have published eight, seven or eight of my own books, and I've worked with over 50 authors since 2007. Look up Brave in Publishing. The link is in my bio as well. And you can do a Google search and you will see. Um, I've been doing this for a while. I'm a real dude. I'm a real person. I'm not about the, the games and all of that. So let's see what else we got going on. How else are you guys been going? What y'all got planned for the weekend other than football? Share with me before we get into the list today. And who's not watching football? Let me ask that question because I know I am. But with some of y'all, who's not caring about that football is going on this weekend? Put in the chat. Oh, yeah, it's time for me to shine. I live in St. Louis. Well, okay. Shout out to St. Louis. One thing with writing a book, let me just say this because I see a lot of people who say they want to write a book. You have to make sure, one, that you have a market. For your book two you are actively involved in your market three that you have a following that will support you because there are books written every day and you have to think how are you going to get somebody shout out to detroit actually my daughter if she uh makes nationals we come to detroit for her to bowl so i'm keeping my fingers crossed i may be in north carolina soon too i'll keep you guys posted uh, i may be going to visit a friend who's not doing well um so i'm not sure when i'll be in north carolina but i'll let you guys know that as well well my weekend probably clean up and stuff okay got you not caring about football have to <laughs> got you thank you go lions you know what? I'm kind of rooting for the Lions. I'm not going to lie. I would like to see the Lions. I'm a Cowboys fan. My team sucks. I can say that. So no disrespect. My team is horrible. We make the playoffs every year and they get knocked out. But I'm rooting for the Lions because they just haven't been there. I like the Cowboys as well. 
That gotta go though. He's the worst. But um, yeah, I'm rooting for the Lions, and of course, I'm rooting for the Ravens. Actually, I don't have a problem with the Ravens or Kansas City because I'm a Mahomes fan. But I'd like to see the Ravens go just because Lamar, I think, is due. So I would like to see that as well. So again, let me ask you this before we get into the list. How many of you have or are currently dealing with a loved one or someone really close to you who has some issues, mental, emotional, or physical, who will not get help? Put it in the chat. Cowboys, bro. There we go. Come on now. How many of you have a loved one, friend, or someone that has some mental, emotional, or physical issues that you can see and others can see, but they just refuse to get help? Some that may even have told you they're not going to get help. I know a lot of the sisters reach out to me and they always ask me, Keith, how were you able to transition? How were you able to transform your life? I want to get my, my brother, my husband, my cousin, my father to do some of the same things. My son. And um, first and foremost is acceptance. But I'm going to get into the list in a second. But I want to make sure I want to hear from you guys. How many of you have had members or people that you love that just has that block? That just does not want to get help. And this is critical because we're going to go through the list. And I'm, again, I'm going to hope to give you um, some some things that can help you. Now, I was messing with you. I'm from... I'm <laughs> really rich? That's what we're going to do? Uh, okay, the Saints got one when, when Breeze was there. I, I can't front. But, yeah, you can't be that loud as a Saints fan, though, bro, Rich. <laughs> who, who that? <laughs> just the Saints for like a, a five-year window. But, um, yeah, because the reason why is that when a young lady reached out to my inbox and she asked me what I covered, she's dealing with a husband that she knows is in pain emotionally, mentally. And now mentally is how we think. Emotionally is how we feel. And physical, of course, is the body. Um, and she's like, he's in physical pain as well as mental and emotional pain. And it's killing her that he refuses to listen when she tries to talk to him. And so she reached out. I even asked her, you know, do you think that he would be interested in counseling? And she said no. And so I've spoken to her a couple times. So I'm trying to help out. I even asked her for her permission to even have this conversation. And um, she said, OK, I'm just not going to give her name. Of course, I have ethics. But I just want to say to you that we often deal with people who fight with not getting help, especially the brothers. Brothers take it as a form of weakness asking for help. And I had to learn years ago to let that go. Listen, my life is not saved by the Lord and my wife if I don't let go of my own foolishness. God was there. My wife was there. But here I was resisting um, everything. And I was like, no, nah, it wasn't going to work. I wish I saw the suppression signs of my husband. I understand, Tina. And that's a tough one because, again, um, that's a tough one because if you're not trained to, you may just get, I'm okay, I'm good, often um, from someone that you care about while the whole time they're in a state of decline leading to depression. Depression is where you can end up, but there's a slippery slope that's there where we can kind of catch some people before they slide all the way down into a all-out depression. But often we miss it because people get real good at hiding how the, the negatives that they feel. And then they, they utter the magic words of, I'm good, I'm okay, I'll be all right. We tend we seem to tell that lie to ourselves on a regular basis. Um, and, and a lot of it is fear. Some of it is confusion. Some of it is shame. Um, there's a lot of reasons why many of us, men and females, do not share our pain. Now, my job as a crisis specialist is to try to get folks to open up and let's have a conversation. If I need to connect you to someone who does specific therapeutic in a particular area, I have those connections or I can deal with it myself. But the thing is, by opening up, you invite help, not critique. I just think he was tired from work daily and lazy. I understand. I understand. Man, if I could go back, I truly would. Tina, I think we all would. And But you got to remember this. Going back, you have to go back to exactly where it is, but you don't know if inputting the information changes. So sometimes we have to just accept it as learning. And unfortunately, the outcomes trigger movements in us. Some, some of us, the reason why we're better is because of the negative. So we don't need to change them. Because, yeah, I would love to go back and 
be there with my mom before my mom passed. I was sitting right here in this chair online, actually live when, when she did, uh, when I got the phone call. But there's a lot of parameters that go into play anyway. We don't know that if we change that, something else doesn't happen. So what we do is we take it as learning. We take it as, okay, Lord, you allowed me to see this. Now I do this going forward. And we become better from our experiences. Instead of shutting them out, we learn from it. And we become stronger. And if we're hopefully ever placed in that situation again, we can show our growth. You guys keep tapping the screen. I appreciate that. Okay, so we're going to get ready to get started. All right. I wish I had saw that my husband and we got married in 93 and I'm separated from him in 99. I understand that. I do understand. Listen, I am happily divorced and happily remarried. I was with my first wife 10 years. Um, 11. We got we started dating in 89, got married in 90, and we separated in 20, 2000, excuse me, and then the divorce was official three years later after going back and forth over foolishness. I'm just going through a lot of grief. Take it easy as you can, Peaches. Take it day by day. And um, there's ways to deal with that as well. Just making sure you're taking steps on yourself. Um, actually, on my YouTube page, I think we did a show on how to deal with uh, the negative feelings and stuff like that. So it's on there as well. Um, thank you so much for the roses, Tina. I appreciate you. And um, I know when I first got separated from my wife, I was in a very bad place because my sons and I was like, I just couldn't believe it had, spo had had spiraled down to this. But, you know, my grandmother came in that night and was like, cry tonight and then get your butt up and start living your life. And my grandmother said, if you really want to recover from this, become the, become the husband that she thought you were going to be. Not for her, but for yourself. And sure enough, all of the great things that happened in my life happened after I got out of a bad marriage. And I was able to find the person who God really wanted me to be with. And um, we're good to go. Yes, I'm trying. My man, he got shot and killed. But the thing about, I always wanted to have this guy. I, okay, I'm a little lost. Yes, I'm trying. I'm, I'm sorry to hear about the demise of your partner. But I always wanted to have this guy. Expect for the killer. But I got you. He passed on May 10th. My condolences. And again, and you have to take time to grieve. And also, don't let anybody tell you how long you should grieve, Peaches. There is no time limit on grieving unless the grieving has now started you to stop living. That is the thing you have to be careful of. That in our grieving, we stop living. It is okay to grieve. It is okay to hurt. It is okay to feel some type of way. You're welcome. Um, the key is when we find our grieving stops us from living, then we have to do something. We're human. We're going to grieve. We're going to feel bad when things happen, especially if they happen in a shocking way. The body has to reset itself like a computer. The brain shuts off certain things and we have to reconnect um, to a lot of things. And it's very difficult. This is where professional help comes in. This is where I come in to be able to help you do that. But when you stop living, when the grieving stops you from living and you cannot find yourself a normal balance, you definitely have to get professional help because that's the key. We don't want to lose more than one person when one person is already gone. You're still here. And I know that sounds <clears throat> harsh. I know some of us even get upset at the fact that we're still here, but you're here. God had you here for a reason. Let's find it. Let's figure it out. Oh, it's crazy. That's why I said me and my God sister talked about my ex the one who got shot. I got you. And we'll have that conversation if you like. All right, so we're ready to go. So today we're talking about 10 ways to deal with a partner who does not want to get mentally, emotionally, and physically helped. You guys know the rules, and they're very simple. You're going to hang out with me, talk with me, tap that screen, and all you got to do is keep notes. The box is not open. I don't need any help today. I'm good. So no, do not send a request. We're good. I got you. I'm here to teach to educate, I mean, to educate, to inform, and to entertain. All you got to do is hang out, relax. I got you. So let's get started. So if y'all are ready for number one on the list, put a one in the chat. And this is only as fun as I need you guys to rock out with me. So you're already interacting with me. Follow Tina's lead. She'll show you. So let's get 10 ones. We got 17 people here. Let's get most of you putting ones in the chat to get started. Thank you, Netta. Thank you, B-Love. Thank you, Tina, for leading the way. I see you, Marie. Yes, Posh. Okay. Yes, Richard. Saints fan. Let's go. Let me get two more and we're going to go ahead and get started, guys. Let me get two more ones in the chat. Come on. And why get your pens out? And if you're driving, do not get no pen out. Just focus on the road because I know some of y'all are driving. Hey, JT. Gotcha. All right. So number one in the 10 ways. Hey, there we go. 
I am Erica. There you go. I am. Appreciate you. Turn it down a little bit. Okay. So number one, the 10 ways to deal with a partner who does not want to get mental, emotional, and physical help. Express your concern. Here it is. Express your concern in a non-confrontational way. Express your concern in a non-confrontational way. Number one, express your concern in a non-confrontational way. Now, if you say, why do you keep saying it? It's to give Tina a chance to type it in the chat for you guys. There we go. See? Right on point. Now, this is important because communicate your concern gently and from a place of love. Avoid blame and focus on how their well-being is important to you. I know you're concerned. And I know sometimes you're frustrated because they won't get help, but do it in a non-confrontational way. You don't want a person putting up a wall. Hello from North Carolina. I should be heading there very soon. You don't want the person to put up a wall and now avoid you or keep information from you. They don't want to feel attacked. They're already dealing with trauma. They're already dealing with negativity. Don't come at them in a con confrontational way. Come at them with love. Because at the end of the day, you can't make them do anything. They have to want to. And that's very important. So, But express your concern. Tell them why you're concerned. Tell them what you're fearful of. Tell them why you don't want them to check out or be gone. Or to have something worse happen. Have those conversations in a loving and open way. It is super important. Because... You want the person, and, and, and you don't know what the person is going through. Some people who know they're going through something are fearful. They're fearful of what is this, what if this is something worse? What if, if something happens to me? What if I'm not here? Who's going to take care of my family? Who's going to take care of my bills? All that stuff is going on inside here and sometimes inside the body. Come at them with love, non-confrontation. And I know that's hard because sometimes we're angry. I know we're just mad that they're not listening and wish they would listen to us. Calm yourself. And remember, the goal is the healing. The goal is getting them help. People don't respond to attacks and threats. They give those back. Or they buck, they close in and decide they don't want to give you anymore. Now they cut you off from any information. Remember, we're just older children. And like children, when we pout or we get upset or our feelings are hurt, we close and shut down. Adults are the same way. I tell folks all the time, adults are just older children. We just got more drama than the kids do. All right? So anybody right now can remember or is currently dealing with something like that now where they're dealing with somebody who doesn't want to listen right now. And how many of you struggle with coming at them with love? Let me ask that question better. How many of you struggle with coming at somebody with love because you're overly concerned? Just put me in the chat. You don't have to tell me the situation. I don't want to trigger anything more than what I'm already triggering. Just put me in the chat if you struggle with coming at somebody with love. Thank you, JT. Thank you, Benny. And it's important that we share that because folks need to know that they're not alone. Thank you, I am. Thank you, Erica. And it's important. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate you. That is super important, guys, because that's one of the places that we have to do the work, too. Because here, let me just give you this. Remember, if they go to get help and the news is negative, they're going to need you anyway. But if you're negative coming at them and things get worse, they may not turn to you for assistance. Don't close yourself out because of your own behaviors. And I hope that makes sense to everybody. Okay? All right, and I hope that you have that down. That's number one on the 10 ways to deal with a partner who doesn't want to get help mentally, emotionally, or physically. You guys ready for number two? And again, if anybody's triggered, I'm sorry. But come on. Y'all ready for number two? Put two in the chat. Let me get, oh, we up to 16. Let me get uh, 10 twos in the chat. Follow Tina's lead. Thank you, Benny. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, JT. Thank you, Netta. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Posh. Thank you, Apple. Thank you, B-Love. Okay, Erica, there we go. All right, so let's go to number two. This is a big one because I find a lot of people do not do this. Educate yourself. And I will tell you on what in a second, but educate yourself is number two. 
Educate yourself. Okay? Educate yourself. Why? By trying to understand their condition or their challenges. Ladies, if you have a husband that has been taught not to show his emotions, he may not understand what that is to seem weak. Educate yourself on how to help him to release that. Men, if you got a, 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 a wife or someone in your life who just, she keeps to herself, educate yourself on ways to help her open up to show you or talk to you. The knowledge can help you approach the situation more empathetically and effectively. The more we educate ourselves on the situation that they are in or the person themselves, the easier it is, now connect this back to number one, to be able to express concern in a non-confrontational way. So the education is important. The more we know, we could be the bridge. As I said to you before, I was going through some stuff. It was my wife, then girlfriend, who kept a firm line because she understood my BS wasn't hers. So she held the bar here and even said, I'll be here when you get here. I'm not lowering myself down to the foolishness that you're in. As you figure it out and want somebody to be here, I'll be here. I needed that. She was the anchor. I had to climb up the chain back to the boat, <laughs> but she was the anchor. And it is super important that we have to educate ourselves, know ourselves, then understand the person that we love, understand what they're going through if we know, and then figure out ways to help them. Make sense? Now, I, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask anyway. How many of you right now, show of hands, when you look back at a situation with somebody you cared about, wish you had knew more for yourself at the time? When you look back now at some of the situations that you've been in with folks who are going through something, thank you, thank you, appreciate it, thank you, Paz, thank you, thank you. And that's super important. Thank you. That's what gives this list merit. Is that when we can look back and go, if I had known that then, then I'll raise my hand as well. Because this is the important part. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Netta. Thank you, JT. I see you, Rich. Thank you. It's important. Because the education is important. You see over my shoulder here, those two master's degrees. And I don't point at them just to flex. I point at them that it means I sat my behind down to learn to know how to help people. And behind my head, there's a couple of certifications that I had to learn as well. because the, And I still am learning. And I, and I got another exam coming up um, in a couple weeks. The more I understand, the more I learn. And also when I'm on social media, I'm on so I can watch and listen to what's popular, what's whatever. And that's the hard part for me is that sometimes trying to understand people, I am introduced to such foolishness that, ugh. It's almost disgusting to me, but I have to because I got to know what people are dealing with to be able to deal with them. And then I have to find ways to purge. So when people say, how come I'm not on more? I don't want to be. I'm on to get what I need to get. And then I get off because if I stayed on every day, I believe I would change because I don't like what I see on social media, but I'm on because I'm trying to help people. And that's the duality that I struggle with. And sometimes when I'm dealing with my own personal situations, it makes dealing with other people's situations even tougher. And like today, I just, real quick, Pastor George was here in the chat. I was just talking to him on my phone. I got another pastor that I got to go see this afternoon. And I just had a friend hit me up and say he's going to be in Delaware this weekend and wanted to know if we can get together and talk. Now, I don't have any plans for Sunday, so I'm going to try to arrange something so we can sit down and talk. And even my friend in North Carolina, I'm going to North Carolina because a friend of mine asked me, um, would it be possible to get together? Now, that was an unusual request, and red flags just went off. Because she doesn't ask for things like that in all the years that I've known her, 40. And so when I asked, was everything okay? And she said no, that let me know something was wrong. Also, guys, let me just, <laughs> yeah, North Carolina, I'll, I'll let you guys know when I'm coming to North Carolina. Here's another thing, too. Let me just add this to the list. Pay attention. Pay attention when people ask or make requests that are not normal don't just blow them off or don't just ignore it sometimes the request is the request for something abnormal is the request for help so asking you to come sit with them ask you to come talk with them ask you to stop by that might be the lifeline that they're asking for pay attention to that very important especially with folks as we're getting older 
I'm 56. I'm not old. I just have the, the handsome gray in my beard. But we do know that folks are not making it to 60 nowadays. And we do know that the average life now ends in the 70s. So many of us on the other side of 50, we're on the other side of the mountain. Be mindful of folks when they ask for something. I live with that regret because a friend of mine asked me in 2016, not asked me, he was going through um, the big C. And we would talk on a regular. And he had asked me, you know, was I going to try to get down to Florida? And I was trying to figure out what my schedule was going to be and how I was going to do it. And when I think back on it, I should have just dropped what I was doing and went. I didn't. And I was on the phone with him the night before he left us. And I remember being on the phone with him and him saying, I'm just tired. And I said, ah, you're okay. You're right to be tired, bro. The medication, everything else. He said, no, Keith, I'm just really tired. And then it dawned on me what he was saying. And I said, okay. I said, then if you're really tired, bro, go ahead and get some sleep. I said, call your wife and your son into the room and let them know you're tired. And go ahead and get some rest. And I knew what I was saying at the time. And sure enough, that morning is the morning that he departed. Please understand that sometimes the request of something that seems quirky may be the request from you. Don't look past that. So I don't do that anymore. When somebody makes a request, I try to honor it. You don't know if that's going to be the last time you get a chance to speak to them. Okay? So we're going to go on to number three. And again, like I said, if I trigger anybody, you can just go ahead and go. And I'm sorry if I do. I apologize. I'm going to try to be as professional and as kind as I can. But let's put the threes in the chat. Follow Tina's lead. Put the threes in the chat. That's another way to let me know that you're here. Now, over here, where are the hearts? Y'all playing over here. What's, what's going on? There's no hearts going over here? Y'all got to tap that screen and stop playing. <laughs> And if I didn't tell you, I have ADD, and it's the, the, the hearts actually helped me, believe it or not. Hey, there go one that popped up. Tap the screen. The hearts actually helped me, too. It also is a heartbeat of the room. It lets me know how you're enjoying the content as well when you tap the screen. So I appreciate you tapping the screen. All right, so let's see what we got here. Number three. This is a good one here, all right, because I'm going to hear from you on this one. Number three is to encourage, but don't force. Encourage. But don't force. Shout out to Michael Jackson. My jam right there. Mike was the only dude that could just show you. He didn't need nobody at the club. Mike could just roll in the club, dance all by himself. He was good. Mike didn't need a partner. But yes, encourage but do not force. Encourage them to seek help. <clears throat> but recognize they have to make the decision themselves. Pushing too hard can often lead to resistance, as I have said already. Do not force anybody to get help. They will resent you if the information goes negative. Because they will look for that excuse to push their pain onto somebody else. Don't force anybody to do anything. Go back to number one. And you will see that this list is connected, guys. You will see that everything on this list is connected. My goal when putting it together was to give you a game plan where whichever one that you use is still going to connect you to the other ones on the list. Just encourage. Don't force. Don't apply pressure. And please, please don't apply guilt. Don't try to guilt trip somebody into doing anything. Don't try to guilt them into anything. Now I'm going to ask you guys in the chat, be honest with me. How many of you have tried to force someone to get help and worse, have tried to guilt them into making changes? Put in the chat. Put me in the chat. If you have once done that or have recently done that. Tina says me. Sugar says me. Michelle says me. Benny says me. Richard says me. There you go. Netta says me. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. Posh says me. And that's important. And I want you guys to pay attention to the chat. Y'all are all from different places. It does not work. Thank you, sugar. You're all from different places, but you see we do similar things. That is our connection, guys. We're human. And we're going to make the same mistakes as well as have the same pleasures and have the same successes, but just in our own way. So the goal is to try to you take what you need from this and use it in whatever way works for you. I see you, JT. But yeah, never force. And I used to try to explain that to teachers 
when I was uh, a dean and trying to help teachers understand, when they used to say, well, how come the kids listen to you? Because I listen to them. And I give them options. Also, to the parents here in the chat, your way or the highway is not always the best way. It is a way, but it's not always the best way. Your child needs the freedom, at times, to be who they are. You just have to guide them. And then there's sometimes you got to pull it because I said so card. It's, that's being a parent, too. But it's that balance, guys. It's that balance. And we as humans, as older children, thank you for the hearts. I see you. Thank you so much for tapping the screen. We as adults, older children, we need those pathways also. We need to be given options. Um, many of us don't work well under force. Same thing at your job. When a job is forcing you to act a certain way, we don't do well under those circumstances. And it's what's called a toxic environment. I find it interesting when I counsel with folks who are in toxic environments at work will go home and create a toxic environment at home. So if a person is struggling mentally, emotionally, or physically, the last thing they need is force because you don't want them to shut down. You don't want them to build up walls where they just no longer give you any information. I must admit, sometimes I've done that, but I've learned not to do that. Thank you, Marie. And that's growth. That's maturity. That's the whole game right there. True, I have more patience with my grandchildren than I did with my husband. Well, because we have a different relationship with our grands and our children than we do our loved ones, Netta. Many of us are that way. Love has 13 different definitions in the Aramaic language. I can love a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I can love my car. I can love my kids. And I can love my wife. And all four would be different. And we have to understand that and be okay with how we flow in between all four. Many of us want to try to fit everything into the same box and we try to jam it all in there. And if it don't seem like it's getting in there, we force it in there. But that's the maturity, the growth that we need, especially when you want love to be abound. Love requires freedom, the freedom for it to grow. And so that's going to be another show for another day. Okay. So, y'all ready for number four? Y'all ready for number four? And again, I'm going to be stopping around. I should be able to go to about 1, 1 15, 1 30 today. We'll see. Because I do have to, my daughter's home today. So, she loves when I'm in here. Because I got to keep an eye. I listen, actually. She don't do too much. She's in there on her tablet. But I listen. Because she's like, okay. She might decide to let the dog out. And they're in there playing around. Because, you know, I'm in here on the show. And y'all know that parent hearing where you're doing something, but you're like, all right, you're supposed to be quiet in there. <laughs> and then it's double for me because I'm a former educator. So I'm like, keep tapping that screen, guys. Let's get some hearts going up there. Come on, keep tapping that screen. Don't don't quit on me. Thank you for the fours. Be love, JT, Benny, Marie. Thank you so much for the fours. Let's keep this list going. Y'all guys tap that screen. We're at 10K already. We're halfway there. We're going to get over 20 today, probably around 30 by the time we're done. And before I give you number four, I am Keith K.L. Belvin, crisis specialist, human service counselor, author, educator, father, husband. You name it, I wear a bunch of hats, but I am glad that you're here. And every Friday from 11.30 to 1, 1 1.30, sometimes 2 o'clock. Hey, we went to almost 3 o'clock last week. Wow. That was because of the snow. I am here to try to help you build on yourself, your relationships, or just things in general. So thank you for being here. You could be anywhere else, but you're here with me, and I appreciate you for that. I know, Benny. Always, you can catch the replay, and I thank you for your support and love. You have a wonderful weekend, Benny, and enjoy your day. All right, number four, offer help, find resources. Some people forget that. We forget to just offer help and to find resources for the person. Offer to do the legwork for the person. Let me say that again. Offer to help, find resources. Offer to help, find resources. There you go. Sometimes we have to do the legwork for them. Say, look, I'll go, I'll go to the spot and get it. I'll go pick up the medication. I'll go make the appointment. Whatever. If you love them, do these things. Don't become a crutch. Become an assistant. Become a resource. Excuse me. Sometimes the barrier to seeking help is not knowing where to start. Offer to help research therapists, doctors, or support groups. Be the bridge for them, guys. Be the bridge. Say, I know you're going through something. Let me call a couple of persons. Hey, I saw a guy on TikTok. I think you would 
would love to talk to. Let's go to his YouTube page and look at some of his videos and tell me if this is somebody that you'd like to talk to. These sessions are helping me to see where I was wrong. No problem, Tina. I love that. And you're helping me when you say that, Tina. I appreciate that. I love to know that stuff that I'm giving out is helping. Y'all have no idea how that helps me. When I get the comments every week, it actually gives me the motivation that it's working because sometimes, I am not going to lie to you this, sometimes I go, what am I doing? Because I see drama. We know sex is going to sell. I know that. I don't even try to compete with sex. Sex is always going to get 9 million people to follow. But when I see the drama that goes on on all apps, I don't particularly, I'm on all the apps. But when I see that drama gets more attention than actual help, it is frustrating. I cannot lie there. It is very frustrating. Because I'm like, folks can't see that this is toxic. But then I thought about it. They enjoy the toxicity. Many of us do. Think about it at work. Girl, guess what happened? What, what? Girl, did you hear about what happened on the fourth floor? What, what, what? Did you hear about the boss humping the who, who, who? So many of us love drama. It's just frustrating because then when it go wrong, we're then stuck with, how do I fix this? The fix is here. It's hard when they reject all assistance and hard to watch. Yes, Tina, that's, I mean, Sugar, that's a great point. All we could do is the offer, um, Sugar. That is a great point. Thank you for bringing that up. Is that at the end of the day, everything that I'm talking about are offers. All we could do is make the offer. I can offer assistance. I can let folks know I'm here. They don't take me up on it. There's nothing I can do with that. And I want you to guard yourself for getting emotionally distraught more than you need to when somebody just refuses. There's, you have to also take that into consideration too is that they just don't want to. And you got to be okay with that. Now I'm not saying be okay with the pain. The pain is going to be the pain. But you just got to be, sometimes we just got to go through it and just that's when you, if you're a praying person, turn it over to God. If you're not a praying person, just stay firm. There's a point when you just got to turn some things over to God and say, God, I've tried, I've, I've done, I've offered, they don't want to hear me, I'm going to leave it to you. And I also have a couple other tips that can help with that as too, Sugar, so I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the hearts. Keep them going, guys. So, again, by offering help, again, you're doing your part. Now, this one goes to your point, Sugar, the next one, number five. You guys ready for number five? It connects to what Sugar was saying. So, put fives in the chat. Let's go to number five on the ten ways to deal with a partner who doesn't want to get mental, emotional, or physical help. Follow Tina's lead. There we go. Come on now. There we go. There's three. I see you, JT. I see you, Sugar. I see you, Apple. Thank you, Netta. Be love. Thank you. Thank you, Lady T. Welcome. I didn't see you come in. I might have missed you. Richard, got gotcha, you, Rich. Appreciate you. Hey, Golden Angel, Marie, Joy Nicole. Love it, love it, love it. Appreciate you guys. This is the big one. This is why I put it number five, right in the middle. Be patient. Be patient. I'll say it again. Be patient. And I'll explain in a second. Be patient. I'm going to give Tina a chance to put it in the chat for you guys. Be patient. Number five, be patient. Thank you, Tina. Change doesn't happen overnight. It is essential to be patient and understand that they might need time to understand their situation. Hey, how we doing, Chocolate? Great to see you. I'm already a silver fox. <laughs> that was the hardest part, Nutter. <laughs> I got you. Be patient. And, and listen, I know all patience has a time limit. I know that. There's only but so much patience in there. I get it. But you have to understand that you're working at someone else's pace. That's Yeah, it is hard sometimes. That's why I tell you. It is definitely hard. This is why I said this is, this is a tough one. Because it is hard to sit back and watch somebody else literally just let happen. Um, let the negative happen. I get it. But you, you, you always want to stand on ready. Boy, <laughs> I got you. I got you, Tina. But yeah, and, and the patience is, a, and when they say purchase is a virtue, patience is a virtue, it is. Because we get frustrated. We want to quit. We just want to give up. But also know when your limit has been reached. 
But in, in that time, give it its due. Because that will help you if things make a turn for the negative. And we pray that it doesn't. But if things take a turn for the negative with this person's condition, whatever it is, one of the things that will help you grieve easier, not that grieving is ever easy, is that you will know that you did what you could have done and you were patient while you did it and you'll be okay. You're never going to be completely all right, but you'll know that you were that you tried and you tried from an honest position. And you offered from an honest position and you were patient with that person. I'm serious. I'm learning so much. Now my ex will be eating this up when I apologize. It's okay. The apology is not just for him. The apology is for you, Tina. If he wants to eat it up, if that's how he takes it, that's fine. The apology is for you to lift any burden that you might have from what you did. How he takes it or they take it, it's okay. It is for you to release yourself. So if they want to take it and be like, oh, I knew you should apologize. You have the right to do that. I am good. I just need to get this up off of me. Please understand that. Is that your forgiveness and your apology is not just for the other person. It is to release you from the burden of it. So once you give it, don't stress. When I apologized to my ex-wife and she decided to ridicule me for about 15 minutes, I knew you wasn't right. I just listened quietly because my apology for my behavior as her husband was for me more so than her. But I had to give her her space to go ahead and tear me up. But it was okay because now years later, I'm in a great place. And I don't worry about, you don't worry about what the person does with the apology you offer it you don't worry about how they take it you offer it if they spit at your feet and go to hell with you okay you did your part and it's okay and i know some of us is like you're supposed to take the apology they took it and they crumbled it up and threw it back at you okay okay take care don't get offended go on about your business live your life Somebody else waiting for you out there. And if not, in the time that you are by yourself, work on you. Become the best you possible. And you will attract somebody who has no idea about your past because all they see is your current. And if y'all get together, y'all have an outstanding future. The possibility of. I'm just telling you. And again, welcome anybody that's come in and joined. If this is your first time here, let us know where you're checking in from. And we're going to continue with the 10 ways to deal with a partner who does not want to get mental, emotional, or physical help. That will hurt me because now I see where we can work things out if he doesn't if he doesn't understand. And Tina, that growth may not be for him. Meaning, the growth that you have that's for you may be for you to be able to share with somebody new. You don't know. There's no way, there's no way of knowing. That's why we don't worry about it when you give it. If he can't see it and receive it to be able to use it to help you two, then it wasn't for him, meaning that he might not have been for you. See, my growth as a husband, my growth as a man, my growth as a father was because I'm connected to who I'm supposed to be with now. This would not work with my ex. She's not built for me and I'm not built for her. So what I became was never going to work for her. It's just not because we weren't supposed to be together. And please understand that the person that's right for you, there's certain things you don't have to do. There's certain things that are automatically slide right into place and link up. You don't have to do. You just have to be you. They're going to be them. And then together, when the Lord says two become one, there you go. I'm not in a relationship, but I love to learn. You, oh, yeah, it's no problem whether you're in a relationship or not, Marie. I got you because you still got to be the best you. So when the relationship comes, you're ready to go. That's the key. What they say? Get ready. So be, be ready. So you don't have to get ready. There you go. The better we find ourselves, the better position we're in when the opportunity to be in a relationship presents itself. That type of preparation, also the type of preparation also sets you up to not deal with no BS. If you know the work you're doing on you and some clown, male or female, short, you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I've done way too much work to be bothered with you. I'm good. It also becomes a form of protection, guys. Tap that screen, guys. Tap that screen. Y'all slowing up on me. I know y'all listening. 
Tap that screen. You ain't got much work to do. We're over 12K. We're on our way to 20 plus. Tap that screen. Keep it going. Also, and again, we're we're adults here, so we're going to hello, Shelly. We're adults here. Please remember this. For all my brothers and sisters who are on hiatus from physical contact with the opposite or same sex. Another reason why benefiting you or bettering you works out is because who wants to come off a hiatus and it's whack or it's horrible? You're like, I took three years, four years, seven years, eight years for this? That's another thing is that the better you do for you, the more you're going to want for yourself. The better... (laughs) I'll say it again, (laughs) Shelly. The better you do for you, the better you're going to want for yourself, which then is going to make your anticipation of things greater. And you're going to want to see certain things ahead of time because if it's not that afterwards, you're going to be like, really? Really? (laughs) I took seven years off of this. Get out. (laughs) But anyway, guys, (laughs) <laughs> Number five, be patient. I need to see what I'm... <laughs> that's, a little, that's a little different, Shelly, but I understand. <laughs> hey, Donna, that's a little different, Shelly. That's a personal comment. <laughs> that is a personal and individual conversation. <laughs> but I, I feel you. I do understand. <laughs> Don't know if I want to come off the bench for that. I'm good. <laughs> It's okay, Shelly. We're adults here. You're like, ah, no, nah, I've been out the game for a while. Uh, no, I'm good. That's that's not worth. No, no, I. Y- you probably could. <laughs> you probably could do all those things, just not with me. Anyway, <laughs> all right, guys, here we go. So today we're talking about ten ways to deal with a partner who does not want to get mental, emotional, or physical help. If you are new, please let us know where you're checking in from. I would gladly love to greet you the right way. And all of you that are here in the chat, remember to please tap the screen. That is my only requirement is that you tap the screen. Other than that, I will take care of everything else. I will take care of the entertainment, the education, and the inf- entertainment, education, and educate, inform. Oh, inform. Information. Okay. Got you. But keep tapping that screen. I got you. And we're on number six on the list. So if you guys are ready for number six, put sixes in the chat. We got, oh, we got 24 people here today. Okay, so let's get 12. Let's go half. Let's get half of you. There you go. I see you, Shelly. I see you, Marie. I see you, Ned. I see you, Tina. I see you, JT. Come on, Donna. Hey, Donna's here too. Hey, B-Love, I got you. Is that LJ? Okay, LJ, I got you. Like, I got you. All right, here we go. So, Rich, I got you. All right, so. And also, make sure you share this out, guys. I can't reach the world, but you can help me reach more people than I can by myself. So share this out to the people on your page. Let them know I'm over here. This way they can come over and get some of this good learning here that we're doing. All right. So number six, and this is important, guys. Model healthy behavior. Model healthy behavior. Sometimes, and this one connects back to, let me just make sure. This one connects back to number one. Express concern in non-confrontational way. But this one, model healthy behavior. Okay. Hey, fun guy. The person is resisting getting help. You know that there's something wrong mentally and emotionally. Physically, you know there's something wrong. You start to act out of character. You start to act up in a certain way because you're angry, you're frustrated, you're sad. Just all of that. Model healthy behavior. Hey, fun guy, show them the behavior that you want to see from them. This is where I said adults are just older children. We tell we're supposed to model for children the behavior that they are supposed to see. Well, sometimes we have to model the behavior for our partners, for our loved ones, for our friends. We have to show them. We have to show that we go to the doctor, that we get checked out, that we go to therapy, that we talk to a counselor, that we go to church, that we read the books. Lead by design. Show them the behaviors that you want them because then you come off very hypocritical. If you're a person that doesn't get checked out, if you rail against the, 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 the system or you sit here and talk about, no, nah, nah, they're going to mess with your head when you go to therapy and now you're telling them to go to therapy. Come on. It doesn't work that way. Sometimes leading by example can be a powerful motivator. Show them the benefits of seeking help through your own actions. 
Now, this is where you put yourself on notice. You telling them to get help, but you don't. You telling them to change their diet, but you eating everything that's trash. You telling them that they should go to a doctor and you don't go to a doctor at all. And your magic word is I'm going to be OK. Or as we Chris Rock said, Robitussin doesn't cure everything. You telling them you should pray and, and let God take care of it, but you haven't opened up your Bible or prayed or haven't opened up your Quran and haven't opened up your Torah. Really? Really? Thank you, Donna. I feel you, Donna. And it's been working, Donna. Since you've been around, we have seen it working. You keep tapping the screen. I appreciate you. Remember, we can't tell somebody what they should do when there's no idea of that in our own walk. They'll look at you sideways. You're telling them, and it's easy to spend somebody else's money. Let me just say that. Let me connect it to what I'm saying. We find it very easy to tell somebody else what to do, yet we ain't doing none of it. None of it. And that is very dangerous, guys, especially if you love somebody. It's also a great time to start if you're not doing. It is a great time for you to be like, you know what? I'm going to go to the doctor with you because I need a checkup. All right, I'll give you an example. And I won't put you on blast, so you ain't got to give me the number. How many of you right now, put it in the chat, be honest with me, don't lie to me. How many of you right now in the chat know your A1C, your cholesterol, and your resting blood pressure? Put me in the chat if you know all three. Put me in the chat if you know all three. A1C, cholesterol number, and resting blood pressure. Put me in the chat if you know all three. Come on. Hmm. I see you, Golden. I see you, Sugar. Now, the reason why I ask that is these are the three that you should know. You should know just because your resting blood pressure lets you know if things is okay. Your A1C lets you know if you're processing your food and your sugars the right way. All right. And those cholesterol numbers let you know what's going on or can possibly going on with your heart. So all three of those you should know. And also, those are the things that you have two out of three. I got you, Tina. So whichever the one that you don't, I want that to be checked out next two weeks or make an appointment. It is important that you know, especially if you know you're not in the health that you would like to be. Let's be honest. Come on. We don't lie here. and We don't play games here. This is a safe space and an educational space here. As a big guy, it is my job to know that. Now, I am what they call a naturally big guy. And I always joke with my doctors. What's the difference between a healthy elephant and a healthy cheetah? And they always look at me and go, what? I go, what's the difference between a healthy elephant and a healthy cheetah? And they go, what are you talking about? And I go, thank you for asking, doc. If you judge the healthy elephant by the numbers of the healthy cheetah, you will tell a healthy elephant they are sick. You have to judge the healthy elephant against the numbers against other healthy elephants, not other animals. So do not allow your size to get you trapped up into someone giving you numbers that were not designed for you. Know your numbers yourself. Know that those machines, blood pressure machines for people of size, always register higher to be safe. Demand that your doctor take your blood pressure manually. Also, home machines, if you have not had it calibrated, meaning take your home machine into your doctor's office and have them calibrate your home machine against a manual exam. So when they do your blood pressure manually and it is 130 over 85 and you check your machine and your machine says it is 155 over 99, no, your machine is telling you you are sick. So you need to take your machine and have it calibrated at your doctor's office so you know. So your doctor will say, your machine re reads 10 points higher. So when you take your pressure, the, subtract 10. This way we can know what to do with you. Always do manually. And yes, beloved, machines run high because it is a way to protect the doctors from being sued. Because if they read low and the doctor goes on that, you can mess around and check out and now somebody's getting sued. I need to do better because my daughter just had open heart surgery 
at 37 and was diagnosed with lupus. Okay, and be very careful. Make sure you follow your regimen. Take all your medication. My daughter's mother is no longer with us, and she unfortunately succumbed to lupus. So I am telling you. So when I go in and they start, and I go, excuse me, could you get a manual cup? And they and they actually get frustrated. Like, yes, I am in control of my medical situation. You are the person that provides the service. And you're supposed to know how to take a manual blood pressure. Go get a thigh cup. I got a big arm. And you see some of them huffing and puffing as they imagine. First of all, my mother and grandmother were nurses. I grew up with two nurses who taught me how to take care of myself, even taught me how to take my own blood pressure. But if you're going to do it, do it right. And I see some nurses and some doctors who get upset because you question them. Check this out. I got paper on the wall, too. I got alphabet behind my name, too. I am an educator. You are a doctor. We are in two professions that are respected. Respect my professionality. Do what I ask you to do when it comes to my life. I'm not disrespecting you as a doctor, but I am respecting my life. Do what I ask you to do. And if they cannot, then I find another doctor. Never pay somebody who don't listen to you. Never stay in an office where a doctor does not listen to you. Laugh at him and say thank you and just walk out and go to the new doctor and have them transfer your information. We're not allowed to use BP machines. Thank you, Lady P. I knew I had some folks in here in the medical field. I'm glad. What I need to go with Lady P at because they forever strapping on the machines where I go here in Delaware. I got into an argument with a chick in New York. She was yelling and screaming at me in New York when I asked her to do it manually. She said she ain't got time. You ain't got time. You got time today. <laughs> also, make sure you keep a, a check on your medical records and make sure you always request copies and keep your copies. You are entitled to your records. You might have to pay a fee for them putting the print together. That's cool. Yeah, take your $25. But I want my records. Also, when you transfer doctors, make sure you bring your records in case they don't send everything. Also, make sure you tell your doctor, could you please make note of what you just said on the chart? I'd like a copy. Watch how quickly some things change. When a doctor tells me something or wants to offer me medication, I go, I'm not really sure about that, but could you write that down on your notes? I'd like a copy of it for my records. Watch how quickly they change the conversation with you. But anyway, now that's what number six is. Model the healthy behavior that you want. Keep tapping the screen. I know y'all enjoying the conversation, but I need y'all to keep tapping that screen. Let's go. Come on. Keep tapping that screen, guys. And again, I appreciate all of you being here. You can be anywhere else in the world, and I'm glad that you are here with me. I thank you for that. Before we go any further, let's do this. Everybody find the purple hearts in your what's name and let's give Tina, my moderator, some purple hearts. I normally wait to the end, but I do not. Tina does a wonderful job because not only is she moderating the chat, she's actually involved in the conversation. Let's give Tina some purple hearts because you should give the people who take care of you their flowers while they're here. And somebody give some purple hearts for me too, Tina. So this way I don't mess around and, and click the live off by accident. Let's get some purple hearts in the chat because, again... You're only as good as the support group that you have around you. I am great. And Tina stepped in when she did not have to. Shout out to Ellie, my original moderator. Her new work schedule doesn't allow her to be here. So shout out to Ellie. And Tina stepped in when Ellie was unable to continue. And she has been fantastic. What's up with those toy X tables in the doctors? <laughs> I know they're not designed for us folks with wide hips. You're like, hey, what am I doing here? <laughs> Thank you so much for the Purple Hearts, guys. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And that's what it is. And also in your regular walk of life, guys, celebrate the people who are cool to you. Call them and say, hey, just wanted to say I appreciate you. My partner called me today to say, hey, I'll be down there in Delaware. You think we could get together? Okay, so actually it's funny. I just mentioned it. Okay, so I actually just mentioned it, and he just hit me up saying that he's going to be free around 2 o'clock on Sunday. I'm going to try to make the drive up to go see him and his wife. When you have the opportunity to see somebody when they're in your area, see them. You never know if you're going to get that chance again. I'm just saying. All right. You ready to get back to the list? Let's go. Moving on to number seven. Let's get sevens in the chat. All right. Let's put sevens in the chat. Let's see. We've got 27 people. The numbers are going up. Follow Tina's lead. Let's get sevens in the chat. We're good to go. And y'all keep tapping that screen. I know I'm giving you a lot to do, but I think I'm earning it right. I'm trying to. And yes, this is an interactive chat. So you come, I just came here to listen. I know, but you got to do a little work here. You got to tap that screen and, and, and give me something in the chat. This is an interactive chat here. 
I get excited by talking to you guys. Keep tapping the screen. And thank you for the seven. I see you, B-Love. I see you, Lady. Lady T, I see you, Lady Stanley. We've got a bunch of ladies in here. Neta, thank you. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate you. Okay, so this one here, again, something that you can help somebody who is going through it mentally, emotionally, physically, who doesn't want to get help. If I can uplift someone, I'm so happy. Yes, there we go, Donna. So you must have knew what I'm about to say, Donna, for number seven. I see you, Chocolate. I see you, Donna. Number seven is create a supportive environment. Number seven, create a supportive environment. This one just for you, uh, Donna. Create a supportive environment. Number seven, create a supportive environment. Thank you, Tina. Make your relationship safe. For open and non-judgmental conversation, this can make it easier for them to open up. Automatically connected to number one. Express concern in a non-confrontational way. But actually, they're all connected. Create supportive environments. Make your relationships safe. As I tell y'all here, this is a safe space. If somebody comes in here on some foolishness, they're gone. We don't engage them. You're not going to upset my peace in here on some foolishness. And no, you don't get to come in here and just act a fool. This is what the block button is for. No. And in your personal lives, create a supportive environment. Make your relationship safe. Say, hey, listen, talk to me. Whatever it is, we're going to deal with it. And don't say that and not be ready for what they may share with you. Don't ask somebody to open up and then go, ooh, I, I don't, I don't know. what you tell me that for? You just asked. So be careful when people go, what's going on? Sometimes they're being nosy and sometimes they really want to help. And let me tell you the difference. Listen to how they set it up. When a person wants to really help, they will set things for you. No, no, let me know. Listen, do you need me to take off? Do you need me to come by or do you need me to stay for a little while? Let's deal with this. They will offer more than the request of tell me. When somebody really wants to help you, they will offer more than just the request for information. They will let you know what they can give you. They'll let you know what they can do. They'll ask you what you need. That's how you will know who you should open up to. But for you as the person receiving, create a supportive environment, guys. Make your relationship safe for open and non-judgmental conversations. Don't judge what they're going to tell you. We just got to get the information on the table so we can deal with it. This can make it easier for them to open up. In my counseling sessions, it's, not, it's non-judgmental. I'm not judging you on what you tell me. I'm judging what you say so I know what to go do. I listen to what you tell me so I go, okay, what plan of action do I need to put together to help this person? But I'm not judging you as the person. And I have heard some... Woo, Trust me, I've heard some things and seen some things and I will not divulge any of it. I have ethics. Your name is safe with me because I have to create a space where you feel comfortable to let all that out. I need all that poison drawn out. Can't do that if I don't create a safe space for you. And I want you to do the same for the people in your lives. Keep tapping that screen. We're almost at 20K, guys. I told you we would get there. We're almost there. Come on. We normally finish up around 30 when it's all said and done. Keep tapping the screen. Let's go. Keep a steady flow of hearts. That's the heartbeat of the room. Thank you so much. Keep it going, guys. Okay. Now, the last three, the last three are a little tougher. So I really want to lock in on these last three. And I normally try to put the tougher ones towards the end because I want to give you a chance to get comfortable with the list. Because these are the ones that can be confusing or are harder to deal with. Are you guys ready? And if you're ready, put I'm ready. And I'll get ready to get into number eight. You don't have to put eight. Just put I'm ready. If y'all are ready for the last three, just put, you can put the eight in or I'm ready. An eight or I'm ready. Either one is good. I'm ready. Thank you, Netta. Thank you for the eight, Tina. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Sugar. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, lady. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, B-Love. Thank you, fun guy. Appreciate you. Okay. Now, this one is a tough one. Set boundaries. And I'm going to get into a little bit deeper. Set boundaries. And you may be saying, so well, how am I going to set boundaries with somebody else who's mental, emotionally, or physically not wanting to do for themselves? Set boundaries. Now, here's why. Now, rock out with me on this one here. If their behavior 
impacts you negatively. Setting and maintaining healthy boundaries is essential. This protects your own mental and emotional well-being. Now hear me out, guys. I'm going to turn this down just a little. You have to decide where that line is for you when the person that you love doesn't want to change. You have to decide when is dealing with their issue creating an issue for you. Everybody is different. Every situation is different. But you have to make that decision for yourself. Now, let me tell you why that is hard. Because the person may still be in their situation, in their mess, in their pain, in their problem, in their whatever. But if they're not listening to you, if they're not caring about what you're offering, if the other seven things that I have given you to do is not working, And it is starting to affect your mental, your emotional, mental, the way that you think, emotional, the way that you feel, or you are starting to become physically ill yourself. And we have all been there at some point in time. You have to draw a line in the sand and say, I can't help this person any longer because it is harming me. And that's never easy. Thank you. We got over 20K. I appreciate that. Mine is when they stop fighting for the goal and start fighting to be right. Thank you, Richard. If that's your goal, that's that's a good one. And that's another thing, too. I like what Richard said. Mine is. Because each person is going to be different, guys. And I like, Richard, that you said mine. You're taking ownership for yourself. And all of us are different, guys. My boundaries may be different than yours because of my training, because of my build. So there's things I will continue to deal with that I know other people can't. And I don't blame them for not. Also, do not feel bad that you had to protect yourself. You cannot go over the cliff with somebody who does not want to put on the brakes. That'd be stupid. You've done the other seven things. You've offered what you could offer. And they just keep ignoring everything. They keep telling you everything is okay when you can clearly see that it's not. They keep fighting you. And now you're starting to go to bed feeling horrible. You're getting up in the morning feeling more tired than you did and you slept 10 hours. And you are starting to feel it. Growth is important. But growth comes with boundaries, Marie. At some point, as the Lord says, to become an adult, we got to put away childish things. But to protect ourselves, it may mean having to cut somebody that we love loose. And if you're not cutting the loose, you're protecting yourself. Please understand the difference. I'm not cutting you loose. I'm just saying I can't go any further with you. I'm protecting me because at this point, we both can see that there's something wrong and you just keep ignoring it. That is how I got to the position of divorce with my last situation. My ex and I both, well, I knew we, this was a horrible marriage. And it just wasn't working. And I was spending more time out of the house than I was in the house. And we were fighting all the time. And we had two boys that we was trying to hide it from. And it was my son at four years old was the straw that pushed me out the door. When he said, Daddy, can I ask you a question? Sure, little man. What's up? He said, how come you and mommy don't kiss and hug like Uncle Gene and Aunt Lisa? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, Uncle Gene and Aunt Lisa always kissing and hugging. You and mommy don't ever kiss and hug. Aren't aren't married, ain't ain't husband and wife supposed to kiss and hug all the time? Woo, now I had to come up with a quick lie. I said, no, no, we're good. We do. We just don't do it all the time. He said, okay. He said, and he jogged on off and went back in the room. He had no idea what he had just hit on. That's another reason why he got to listen to children. And at that moment, sitting in the living room, I realized I was raising, because my other son was eight, I realized that I was raising two young men to think that it's perfectly healthy for daddy to be in the living room all the time and mommy to be in the bedroom. No. That was the day that I decided I have to end this. That was my boundary. I got to go because I'm harming my children and it's not right. And you don't realize how much damage you do to those around you because they don't always tell you, especially children. So you have to create a boundary where you go, 
at this point, I can't help you anymore. If you can come back to this point, I got you. But I can't go any further with you. You can drive the car to the edge of the cliff or over if you like. I can't go with you. Let me out. You have to do your boys in the hood. Yo, no. Pull over. Let me out. You have to get out. It's not for you. So number seven, set boundaries. Number eight, excuse me, set boundaries. Now I'm going to ask you guys in the chat. I want you to be honest with me. How many of you erased the line for your boundary? Got you. Thank you, Tina. Enjoy. We can take it from here. I appreciate you, love. I'm going to deputize the rest of the chat. I got a bunch of other people that's going to be the moderator. Shout out to you, Tina. Detach mentally, emotionally, or let go and let God pray fervently for them. Yes. How many of you have erased your boundary and went further than you should have and it cost you? Just put me in the chat. Put me in the chat. If you erased your boundary or you went past where you knew you were supposed to be and it it took you somewhere you wasn't supposed to be, put me in the chat. I had a feeling. And I think we've all been there to some degree. And I think it's important. Thank you so much. I appreciate all you being honest. Because I think if we've loved somebody, we've all crossed a line that we kind of said we wouldn't or we shouldn't. And we did it hoping that it would get better. And many times it didn't. So I thank all of you for saying um, me. All right. For these last two, and this is open for anybody to take Tina's place for me for the next two. I just need somebody to put it in the chat when I say it. We only got two more. Me, but I'm okay with it because it helped me grow. Yes, it does. But see, Marino, you know it is. That's that's maturity and growth after the fact. And that's fantastic because we need that. Because we have to look back and go, you know what? I kind of screwed that up. I'm not going to do that again. And that's important is that we got to be able to, one, be honest with ourselves and two, accept that we made those mistakes and did not do it again. The, tr- the, the proof of true learning is when we don't make the same mistakes that we were supposed to have learned from. That's the true assessment. If the learn has hit fertile ground is that we reach the point. We reach the point where we know exactly that we're not going to do that again. Like once I knew I had transitioned and grew into the man of God that I was supposed to be, there was no way I was going back to the man that was this guy here and from Jiggle to Jesus. That's why the picture here is of faded women in the rear view mirror because they were behind me. In this picture, my wife and I was in there too, but the man that I was at that time, and if you see it actually on the roadway going forward, actually over here it says highway to heaven. So and I designed that cover. My uh, cover designer was able to take it from here and put it on in the book. Actually, I have a new cover design as well for the new book as well. All right. So number nine. And again, these the last, I tell you, the last three going to be tough. But number nine, and somebody put it in the chat for me. I'm enjoying this live. Oh, thank you, Netta. I appreciate you. I'm glad that you're here. And I hope that you'll join us again in the future. All right. Number nine. And somebody put this in the chat for me. Seek support for yourself. I just skipped the nine. I, I just went right into it. I got, oh, oh okay, Marie, let, see, y'all, I was going right into the nine, but yes, let's get nines in the chat. See, that's why, I'm sorry, I'm breaking protocol. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, B-Love. All right, let's get uh, eight more nines. Come on, follow Marie, B-Love, and Netta's lead. They actually got me back on point, see? I appreciate you. Let's get some nines. And thank you, JT. Hold on to that, JT. I'm going to come back to it. Thank you so much. Y'all guys are working hard in the chat. I love you for that. And we're over 20K likes. Hey, good afternoon, Jen. Good to have you here. See you, Miss T. Got you, Golden Angel. Let me get three more nines and we're good to go. Because JT has actually already put it up. Let me get three more nines in the chat. We're going to go forward. Because like I said, the, the last three are the toughest ones. So I wanted to make sure that we're prepared for it. One more. There we go. Get two more nines. We're good. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, fun guy. And one more nine and we're ready to go. Thank you so much. Oh, and sugar, just there you go. That's the way to do it, sugar. There you go. Seek support for yourself. Now, this is important, guys. Number nine is seek support for yourself. Dealing with a partner who refuses help can be stressful. Consider seeking support for yourself, whether it's from a friend, family, or professional. This one is critical. A lot of times I will have husbands and wives come to me and say, can you speak to my husband? Can you speak to my wife? Of course I can. 
But if I'm listening, when I'm listening to them, I'm listening for certain things. And if I hear certain pain things or pain sounds in their voice, I'll say, how about you and I talk first? How about you set up a session so you and I can talk so I can get a better idea of what's going on? And the reason why is because I can hear in their voice, they need the help first. Because as they're explaining to me, as they're explaining that their significant other doesn't want to come to counseling or whatever else, I know that if I can get them to connect with me, I can parlay the information I know into them and they can take it into the house. I used to do the same thing in the classroom. I knew a lot of my students came from homes where the level of education wasn't where it could be. So I would teach through the kid to the parent. I would say, take this home, share this with your mom, your grandmother, your caregiver, share this with whoever. Y'all do this for homework. Y'all, meaning all of you do this. So I would create homework that would get other family members involved because that was my way of getting the the. The, the adults at home to get involved with the kid. So in my counseling sessions, I will say to the person, you come talk to me. You come meet with me. You set up the session. You get on the Zoom call with me. Let me work through you to help your partner. Because sometimes you need it, guys. You need it. Again, I'm going to ask you the question. How many of you now, looking back on some of your relationships, wish you had gotten help for yourself? Put me in the chat. Put me in the chat. When you look back at your relationships and go, why didn't I get help for me? Put me in the chat. Thank you, Pink. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Is that like? Got you. Thank you, Sugar. Thank you, Lo. Is that Larice? 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 Larissa Moore? I want to get that right. Thank you. Thank you. And that's important because that should fuel our forward. And what I mean by fuel our forward is when we look back and go, I should have did differently. We have the opportunity to do that now. So if you're ever presented with certain situations again, use that knowledge. I talk about that in my counseling sessions. We're going to go back into the past to get information, not emotion. And we're going to bring that forward so I now can use that to help you going to the future. There is so much learning that is in our past if we allow ourselves to go back there and get it. The reason why many of us don't is because we're still connected to the emotion. Get past the emotion. There's so much learning that can go on in the past. Once I put my emotions in check, oh, there's so much I learned from what I used to be. That helped me not to ever become that. And what helps me help people today. When people say, how do I talk about certain things so easy? Because I addressed it in my own life. I went back in my own life and sat down with myself and was like, how could you do such nasty things, boy? Well, because I realized that I was molested at six or seven years old, that I didn't have a support system, that my mother and grandmother didn't have a male around to teach me how to do male things, that I became hypersexual when I was 11 or 12 years old, because in my mind, I'm thinking this is what a man has to do to prove he's not homosexual because I thought I was because I was touched. So I'm out here just living wild because I had never gotten healing. And then the streets took over. The streets was like, yes, be that way. Be that way. Yes, treat women like trash because that's what we do out here in the streets. Really? Okay, let's go. And I had old heads telling me that that's the way you treat women. Old. Like, okay. So now I'm getting confirmation and I'm getting celebrated and I'm getting cool points. Oh, I'm out in these streets heavy. So all of the things to the negative were there. So once I became educated, once I made a transition, Once I sat down and became a man of God and understood what the power of my scripture could help me with, not the church. The church is a place where I go to enjoy other people, but my direct connection with God himself, my direct connection with myself, my direct connection with education, and more importantly, my direct connection with my past is what allowed me to sit here now and be able to help people through their own dirt. And all of you possess that same power. Thank you, Shania. Thank you, Netta. All of you have the same power. Why? Your past is chock full of informational nuggets that you can use right now. And if you can't help yourself with it, you can help your kids or help your friends or help a coworker. When your son or daughter go, dad, I want to do something nasty to her. And you go, son, let me tell you what happened to me. Or when your daughter go, I think I love him. I think I'm going to give him some girl. Let me tell you what happened to me. Hey, did you got here? (gasps) Yeah, let me tell you the truth. (gasps) Yes. And here's why I don't want you to be that way. 
And here's what happened to me and why I don't want you to go down that pathway. That is what's in our past. It's chock full of information. The problem is many of us can't get past the emotion. And because of the emotion, we don't want to talk to nobody about it. We just want to push it way down and just leave it there. And then wonder why we have so many problems later on. And then we trauma bond with somebody else who did the same thing and they push theirs way down and we get together. And then when all this springs up, we wonder why our relationships are going to crap. Because unresolved issues are like time bombs, just ticking, waiting to go off. And you want to be able to disarm them. And once you learn how to disarm them, trust me, you want to go out and help other people. Girl, I seen the same thing. I was dealing with the same thing. Let me show you what to do. That's why some of us got to stop crapping on old heads who want to offer help. I know they're annoying. I know some of our elders just don't know how to part the information. I get it. But listen to some of it. Yeah, sometimes you got to be like, okay, pops, I got to go. But listen to our old heads. Remember, they weren't taught how to dispense. But the information is still there. And yeah, they tell long stories. And yeah, they tell you the same story over and over again when you see them. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like he didn't just tell you that a month ago when you saw, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, you was on that train too, huh? The one that stopped at the third stop. And did I tell you it stopped at the third stop? No, you didn't. Tell me again. Smile, <laughs> smile, but sit at their feet. Walking history books help ease pain. Listen to what I just said. Walking, breathing, living history books. Help ease pain, help protect you from pain. Let an elder explain their pain. It helps protect you from your potential pain. Trust me when I tell you. And get your little ones to sit at the feet of your elders. Stop telling them to rush older people. Teach your children patience. Let them sit at their feet of their elders. There's nothing greater than a living history book, especially with the fact that they're trying to remove history from school. Only thing we're going to have left is our living history books, and they need to be protected. And if you're my age, 56, I'm close to being. Well, I think I am a living history book, but I work on it. I'm not that old yet. There's still some darkness in there. When all this go gray, then that's it. (laughs) All right. Yes. But anyway, thank you so much. Okay, so here we go. This is the toughest one, and it is the last one. Keep tapping the screen. Keep tapping the screen. Keep tapping the screen. This one is the toughest one, and this is the hard one, so I want to make sure I am in the serious mode, because I like to laugh and joke, but I want to, when things are serious, they need to be serious. Okay. Are y'all ready for number 10? I want you to put 10 in the chat and put me next to it. I want to know if y'all really ready for the last one, and I'll go back over the list in a second, and I'll answer any questions that you have. KL, are you dressed? All right, start getting dressed, baby, because we got to go out in a little while. Not yet. Because I want you to get started now instead of waiting until later, baby doll. All right. No, you already ate breakfast. We'll get something in a little while. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you. Let me see. I'm missing you. I'm talking to my daughter here. All right. Thank you, JT. Thank you, Netta. Thank you, Light. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Miss T. Be love. Okay. Number 10. Somebody put this in the chat for me. Evaluate the relationship. Number 10. Somebody put that in the chat for me. Evaluate the relationship. Somebody stick that in the chat for me. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate you. Now, this is a tough one. and That's why I made it the last one. I never, thank you so much, Marie. I never tell somebody to end a relationship. They have to make that decision on their own. I do make sure that the people I work with are safe. If you're not safe, then everything else comes to a halt. And I have to make sure that you understand that you're in a position not to be safe and you need to make moves to be safe. But I'll never tell a person to end their relationship. So number 10, evaluate the relationship. If their refusal to seek help significantly affects your relationship or your well-being, it might be necessary to reassess the relationship's future. Now, 
this one directly connects with number nine. Number eight bleeds into number nine and comes out as number 10. When you set your boundaries and you seek support for yourself, you may have to now sit down in number 10. This is why I put all three of these at the end. There's also a point when you got to say to yourself, this right here is dangerous to me. This right here, this person's behavior towards their mental, their emotional, and their physical health is dangerous or not working and is in a very negative place to me and the children or to whatever. You have to evaluate that and you have to make a decision. It is not for me to tell you what the decision is, but what I will tell you is what I tell folks in any of my sessions. You have to know what you will and what you will not deal with. That's why, true, that's why I left. Cause, and Miss Netta, oh Lord, Netta, I don't need to, oof, Netta. <laughs> I, say, I, and I know you must be hearing the foolishness of Nat, Miss Netta. Anyway, Netta, the problem is anytime something turns physically abusive, mentally abusive, emotionally abusive, spiritually abusive, it's time to separate. No one has the right to turn you into a mental, emotional punching bag or an actual punching bag. No one. I don't care what their status is with you. No one has the right to harm you and tell you that is good for you. No part of the game is that even accepted. Nowhere. I know people deal with it. I know people do it. I know people claim out of love. I know people do it out of fear. I know people do it for a lot of reasons. Men or women, there's never an acceptable time for someone to place their hands on you or to put you in a box mentally and emotionally to where you are starting to lose focus on who you really are. Unacceptable. And you have to evaluate the need of that relationship in your life. Because I can honestly tell you, there is never an acceptable reason. Don't give me because I need somewhere to live. Listen, there's shelters. If somebody listening, you go stay at the hospital if you have to. There's always an option. It may not be the option you like. It may not even be the option that you want at the moment. But if it's going to keep you safe, you must protect yourself. Hey, brother Ron, you must. Never acceptable for somebody to put their hands on you. Never acceptable for somebody to try to fry your brain to make you think and feel how they want you to feel. You're not a robot. You're not a dog. You're not an animal. And even with an animal, that's unacceptable. That's not even the way I don't teach my dog by beating on him. And I don't try to scare my dog into just doing what I want him to do because that's what I want him to do. Then what's the point? I didn't, I didn't, it's a pet, not a slave. And you're not a slave. That's what you do with a slave. And even then, it's inhumane. So number 10, evaluate your relationship. If you can see it and other people can see it and you've tried all the other things on the list and that person is still resisting you, then it's time. Then it's time for you to make a decision one way or the other. But evaluate everything. That's why number nine is squeezed in between number eight and number 10. Daunting behavior can be another defense mechanism to control, of course. And it's always a struggle for control, fun guy, whether it's a control of self, control of the relationship, control of environment, whatever it is. It's always about control. That's why true love, true, true love is about sharing control with somebody else because you trust them not to harm you. And that is why we face heartbreak when somebody can't hold up to what we thought we had. But that's a different show for a different day. I'm going to go back over the list, guys. And I got a couple of minutes and I will gladly answer all your questions because I do got to jump off because I got to get dressed. Because I do have evaluate and plan and execute. Come on, sugar. You know. All right, so I'm going to go back over the list for everybody that might have came in late or missed it, and I'll gladly answer any questions. I got a couple minutes. 
And one, I want to thank you guys for all of the hearts. Keep them going. Let's get to 25K. Keep tapping the screen as I go through the list. And as I answer the questions, let's get to 25K. And we are good to go. All right. That's going to be the, the revised goal for the day, 25K. So I'm going to go back to number one. Thank you so much. Keep tapping that screen, guys, and check your list. So if you missed any, you can get it right now. All right. Number one on the 10 ways to deal with a partner who does not want to get mental, emotional, or physical help. Number one, express concern in a non-confrontational way. And anybody, no, you don't have to put it in. Number two, educate yourself. Number three, encourage, but don't force. Number four, offer to help, find resources. Offer to help, find resources. Number four. Number five, be patient. Number six, model healthy behavior. Number seven, create a supportive environment. Keep tapping that screen. I appreciate you guys. Number eight, the big three, set boundaries. Number nine, seek support for yourself. And number 10, the last one, evaluate the relationship. All right, we got them all. I got a couple of minutes, so if you have any questions, keep tapping the screen. We're going to get to 25K, and then you can go ahead and relax your thumb, your, your, your fingers. I know some people be getting cramps from tapping the screen. Keep tapping the screen. We got a 1,000 more to go. We're going to get to 25K. In the meantime, while you guys are tapping the screen, if you have any questions, put it in the chat. Or if you have something you want to share about today's live, you can put that in the chat, too. I appreciate it. You guys fill my battery up when I come here. Thank you. Good session. Have a great weekend. You too, B-Love. I appreciate you. I'm going to be jumping off in a little bit. I'm eating and listening. Okay, Marie. What we eat, Marie? What's for lunch today? I'm blessed for you, for your live. I'm thankful. Okay, Donna. And you keep up the great work, Donna. I've seen you improving over the time. You're doing good. Hi, are you still there? I'm still here. I will check my DMs as soon as I get off the live, which I always do, as well as if you'd like, you can always send me an email too, but I'll see the live, I'll see the, the request and I will definitely check it out. Crepes and eggs. That's nice. Very thin pancakes with eggs. I had some eggs this morning too, but wheat bread. I had some wheat toast. But yeah, I'll definitely, Peaches, I'll definitely respond. I normally respond to all my DMs unless it's something crazy. I got you. Keep tapping the screen, guys. We're almost at 25K. All right, then that's great. I have to inbox you. Okay. Or send me an email. Like I said, just click the link in my bio. My email is there too. Whichever works for you, I'll get it. And I'll definitely respond. Yes, one day at a time with my therapy. Yes, listen, therapy is a wonderful thing. I will be in North Carolina. I'm not sure when. I have to check. Um, I'm not sure. I'm also, I got to figure out, I got to get to Florida too. So I'm just trying to figure it out. I might even try to set up a couple of book signings if I can while I'm in North Carolina. But I try not to mix when I'm there for certain things, if I'm there to see somebody for certain things, I try not to set up too much professional stuff because I don't want to cut into the time that I'm there to try to help somebody. So I don't make it so much about business. Um, but most time when I am somewhere, if people are in the area and want to come by and say hello, I'm always there and I carry some books with me. You'll just wait on me. OK, I got you, Peaches. I'll definitely take a read. I'll offer what I can. Hey, we made it to 25K. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Y'all are the best. And I still have a couple of minutes, so if you have any questions, feel free. I really enjoyed the live. I'll be back from Battle. I'm, I'll be back from Battle Creek, Michigan. Yes, and I'm hoping in June. I think it's July. Nationals are in Michigan. Um, hopefully, I'll be there with my daughter bowling. Um, last time I was there, I spoke at Wayne. I think it's Wayne State in Detroit. I think it is. I spoke at Wayne State in um, 2000. I want to say 16. I think it was the last time I was in Detroit. Do I come to St. Louis? No, I have not. I would love to come to St. Louis, but I don't have any business or anything connected or any churches that I work with in St. Louis. So if you got a couple of pastors that you'd like me to speak to, because I do create mental health ministries. I work with a church here in Delaware, one in 
Maryland, and there's one in Alabama that pops up every now and then. When are you in California? I have not been to California since 2003. I would love to come back and set something up. So, um, again, I'm always trying to set up different businesses where I can. And if you have churches or anybody that's interested, send them my way. I'll gladly set up something to come and speak or to talk or to, to do what I do. All my information, everything, all my professional links is in my um, is in my bio. Everything is on my link tree. Even my um, even my one my one sheet, my uh, my bio. It has all my information and all my books. Actually, I got to update that because I didn't put the latest book on it. And speaking of the latest book, uh, these are just three of some of my books that I have written. This is my memoir from Gigolo to Jesus. My most recent book, 12 Steps to Recover from Toxic Relationship. This one here is my fictional book, Lukewarm Saint. And I have a bunch of others, as well as I've been featured in Ebony Magazine and all that other stuff. But I'm only as good as the person that I helped last. So all the stuff that I've done is fantastic, but I'm only as good as the person that I helped yesterday. So you can have all the accolades in the world, but if you hurt somebody yesterday, then it all goes out the window. But yeah, I come to the table with receipts. And if your church doesn't have a mental health ministry, and what is a mental health ministry? A ministry that gives you the mental health services that you need and your church pays a portion of the fees. You pay the rest and I supply the service. I work that out with churches and it works out. I have something in mind with spiritual romance, family drama and death, but unexpected death like, okay. Now the question is, do you have a market? And who are you going to market to? And are you ready to get out there and grind? Because it is not easy, but it's doable. You just have to be able to decide whether you're going to invest in yourself or find. Um, let me go back to my song. There we go. Does your insurance do whatever it takes? But yeah, I've written seven books and published all my books. I've been a part of six or seven anthologies. How do I do? I get more. Um, literally you just have to come on. You have to make sure that your online presence speaks to what your book talks about. You have to show yourself either as the authority or a person that has a distinct idea about a particular thing. So even if it's a fictional book, you want to come on and share a little bit about the book, talk to people about it, engage who would be your, your, your readers. Um, and make sure that you offer something. Think about the things that capture your attention and then you have to recreate those. One of the best things I share with authors, if you want to model, look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Marvel will tell you something is coming out three years from now and promote it now to build a following for it while using the following that they have now while talking about people that have already seen previous things and they interconnect all of it. It is one of the greatest marketing models that you could look to. So I use my past to talk about my present, which helps set up my future. And that's one of the things that you have to consider. Yeah. Any other questions? I got about four or five more minutes. Yes, that's how I am now my past, but present. Okay. Remember, books, people sell books. Books don't sell themselves. So you have to invest in yourself in terms of becoming a voice for your book. If you don't speak for your book, then there's no reason for a person to purchase it. Like my book here, you grab any of my books, I can give you something like this one here, 12 Steps to Recovery. Like everything I talked about today, this would be directly connected to number 10. So let's say you decide to leave the relationship because the person didn't want to change. Well, my book is actually going to help you make your way through it. So when you look at what I have written in my book, you talk about step number one, accept your current mental, emotional positioning in your life. So if you had to leave a relationship, you got to consider how we got here. And then another one is pay close attention to how you got to this point. Well, you got to this point because the person didn't want to make any changes. Number three, don't blame yourself for your part in this toxic relationship. The person didn't want to make any changes, so don't blame yourself. And then I give you steps on how to do all of that. And again, it's not a light book, so I had to really take some time with it. And if we're again going with number 10, I had to realize that it was time for me to leave my, my first marriage. Well, first of all, it was because I didn't know how to deal with me. 
So I had to learn how to deal with me, transform me. So hence, that's the title from Jiggle to Jesus. You think my ex family will allow it? You, they don't just change the names. You don't have to put their names about anything. You don't have to ask them. No, I do not have Audible. And you know, you're like the third person that asked me, but here's the problem um, preparing is that I don't know if people will buy it. Yes, people like hearing me talk, but it's a matter of creating the marketing for the Audible book. And then if people are actually purchasing it, because a lot of times when I'm in different circles and I bring up that all I listen to is Audible books, a lot of people are not getting them as much as my audience does not as much. So... It's something that I'm considering. Tough facade, in most cases, uh, uh, compensation for those who are easily hurt. Roles and games people play. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely, keep really keep. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's. I hear it, but sugar, it's 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 about what sells, and a lot of people who listen to audio books. I could talk to, but it's a matter of, of is it going to be worth the investment? Right now, I'm not sure. But it is definitely on the list of things I want to do. I want to sit down and actually turn one of my books. I think From Jiggle to Jesus would be a great audio book. And it's not that long, so I don't have a problem with doing audio. Like, I listened to Will Smith's book, and I'm so glad he was the person reading his book. And right now, I'm listening to Jada Pinkett Smith's book, and I'm so glad she's reading. And it's just something different about, especially with the fact that I like uh, biographies. Um, and memoirs is something about having a person read their own that helps me because I'm a person that um, loves to listen to the inflection in your voice. Um, and that is something that um, I enjoy too, because when you're reading your own work and you have to come across some of the more difficult parts, you can hear it in their voice. You can hear it in Will Smith's voice. You can hear it in Jada Pinkett's voice when they're, when, uh, they're giving their diction. The dedication to your wife, the dedication to your wife would be great. Yes. Yes, it would be. And when I would perform my poetry, that was always something. When I would read the, the, the piece that I dedicated to my wife. Yeah. Thank you so much, sugar. So, yeah. I have, that would be my, my fourth book, uh, my poetry book. This is my very first book from 2007. This is actually my very first book. See how tattered this book is? This was the very first book, and the company that I was using wasn't the greatest in terms of their, their printing, so I had to go to another company, but this is my very first book of any book. This is my first What's Name copy, um, and I saved this as wrinkled as this is. This is the one I used to take with me on stage because I was never a poet that can memorize everything, so I would take this one on stage I think I still have some of the paper clips in it that I would read different pieces from. Sleepless nights. So yeah, just some of the books that I've written. <laughs> Two minutes left, guys. I'm gonna get out at 1:30 because I definitely got to get out of here. I gotta get dressed. Line. Any other questions, guys? But either way, I want you to have a great weekend. It is always a pleasure to be in front of you. I'm glad the Lord allows me to. I'm just watching on you. I'm just watching on you. I actually sent you my number if I can. Well, you can send me a question. I don't necessarily, well, you can always send me a number. I always will talk to someone, but yeah, I'll check your question out. I got you. Like I said, as soon as I get off here, I will definitely take a look. <laughs> it's okay. Do I think dreams have meanings? Yes, dreams are connected to our subconscious. Um, and there's a lot of things that affect our subconscious. And I think there's something to it. And I think there's always, if you can remember certain dreams, I would get up and write that down. And you can always look up dream meanings or whatever. I keep having heart about my mother. I would, if you can remember them and it's reoccurring, write them down and see what they're connected to. Also, you want to check and pay attention to what you might have been feeding yourself or fears that you have. 
So it's very important that you, when you can, um, while you can, to write down, because a lot of times dreams can be connected to um, unresolved issues inside our our personality, um, unresolved crisis, um, unsettled situations, fear of. So if you can remember, write it down. And then there's always different online guides to dreams. I personally would try to seek out a, a professional psychologist, um, especially when you're talking about dream interpretation. Be careful because you have a lot of spiritual based folks and you have a lot of other folks who will give you all type of interpretations. I personally would find or make an evaluation, if, especially if it's reoccurring, find a psychologist to sit down to really have that medical side first and then add the spiritual side too, because I believe in all of it. But you want to make sure that you give yourself the, the best um, interpretation as possible. And I hope that that makes sense. Marie, thank you, Keith, for all your blessed work being a part. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm honored by that. Thank you. Sleepless night. Thank you, too, as well, fun guy. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'm honored by that. But never love like you. Like a stone. Raheem Devon, Eric Robinson, Anthony Hamill, and Kevin Ross. Great song, Lessons. One of my favorite songs. Actually, I keep saying I gotta I love music. I'm a music junkie. I don't think I have any one favorite song. Like hundreds of thousands of music. My iTunes is just ridiculous. I got maybe sixty thousand that's a ridiculous amount of songs. I like all this space on my computer just for music. And albums on top of albums, old ones, new ones. Every bad choice only been with a thorough checklist. Every wrong turn showed me there's a clear direction. I had to let it go. But I thank you all. I appreciate you all. If it was up to me, I would. All right, it's 1.30. I'm going to get ready to get off. Guys, I want to tell you, thank you so much for honoring me and being here with me and spending some time with me. I hope that this list helps you. The replay will be over on YouTube. If you want to send anybody over there, you can, and I will gladly, you know, subscribe. First of all, make sure you subscribe and then share it. Share the information. Let somebody know you missed a good one today. Go check this brother out. Come check us out next Friday because I am only as good as you guys allow me to be. And hey, thanks, Rich. I am only as good as you guys allow me to be. And I love who's here. It's never about the numbers of who's not here. It's about who is here. And proof is you guys will always come through with the likes that allows TikTok to keep pushing my stuff in different places. And I appreciate all of you. And I'll do what I can to help. Uh, let me just double check. Peaches, I will definitely, when I jump off, I'll definitely take a look as I get dressed and then do what I can and offer what I can. All right, guys, have a wonderful weekend. God bless. Please be safe. Enjoy the football games if you are watching them this weekend. Take care. <laughs>